Don't y'all just love that intro, dog? I love it too, big dog. I love it too. So what's going on, man? This thing popping. I'm D. About to get in here, talk about everything from Bitcoin to ball. Uh, just had to take YouTube off, add YouTube in, take Facebook off, add Facebook in. So y'all gonna get back in here. Um, just had to had to do a little something right there at the beginning. What's good? We need to run the intro again. <laughs> First thing first, man, 786-405-9499. If y'all want to get involved with IOD squad, uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, we navigating right through the war, showing you how this thing should should go, showing you how this thing work. 786-405-9499. You want to get down with IOD, IOD squad, invest or die. We out here. I'm going to post a link. That's what I'm going to do. going to put the link right here. Put the link right here and the, the I'm gonna post it at the top of the YouTube comment section. Cause I know y'all wanna know what's going on with the war. Oh Lord, the stock market is failing. Jesus Christ, go run and hide the children. Crypto fell last night. I put a forex crypto play in. As soon as I put the play in, it went straight down. And I was like, that's not, that's not, that ain't right. Went to Twitter. Found out that Russia was attacking. <laughs> Russia was attacking Ukraine, man. I was like, oh, well, there it is. It makes sense. There, there we go. That's that's the issue right there. So there we go, man. IOD squad. Let me see. Investor die. Investor die. Talk about NFTs, crypto, uh, the IOD squad to get first first dibs at the NFTs we're about to drop, all of that stuff. I'm going to pin it at the top of the YouTube or just text me 786-405-9499. Bro, listen, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. The rest of your life can be seconds away. Every time somebody call me, they say, man, I've been, I've been watching for seven months, though. I ain't really. I, I've been looking and watching for seven months. I ain't. Man, but I figured it was time to go ahead. Every time. That's what they say every time. Every time, that's what they say. Every time. So what's going on with y'all, man? Let me know in the comment section where y'all boy from. Let me know in the comment section where y'all boy from. Let me know in the comment section where y'all boys from. You see Daryl Porter Jr. on the on the picture. New Jersey, Brick City, New Jersey. New Jersey, you be here every day, don't you, Brick City? You, you be here every day, don't you, doggy? Brick City, New Jersey. Mark Pearl said he knows Daryl Porter Jr. really good. Daryl Porter Jr., son of um, Daryl Porter. I think he played for the Dolphins, coach at American Heritage, defensive coordinator for a while. I'm not sure if he's still there. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not sure if he's still there. Um, we've heard about this family for a while. We, we've seen, heard about this family for a while now. Seeing different things coming up at American Heritage. Um, the wife's beautiful lady. I think she, uh, Airport Jewish Commission, West Virginia. I guess it's Daryl Porter, and that's the wife. Um, <clears throat> the mom, 
not the wife or a mom, I guess it's the ex, you know what I'm saying? The mom. And I think she has a, has a child from Shady Tree, uh, Marvin Jones, whose son, actually Marvin Jones Jr., who played for American Heritage. Um, so Daryl Porter goes up to West Virginia, gets it in. He was up there for a, a year, a year or two. Last year, it started, started for West Virginia last year, played 13 games, 46 tackles, five pass breakups. Um, and decided to get out of there, him and another corner, some other DBs, and I think left him with two DBs, and he's picking between LSU, Miami, FSU, and Oregon. Um, we have a reason to believe that, I mean, we have a really good chance to get Daryl Porter, but how, how y'all feel about Daryl Porter Jr.? How did y'all feel about him when he left? How do y'all feel about him now? Um, talk to me. How, how y'all feel about Daryl Porter Jr.? He signed in 2020. Yeah, so he was done about two years. <laughs> Mark Pro, Darryl Porter, played in Boston College. His half brother, Marvin Jones, two years he had impressed Kirk Herb Street. <laughs> Mark Pro, you want to call in Mark Pro and just be part of the show? <laughs> that boy wanted us to know he knows Darryl Porter. Yeah. He knows Darryl Porter. <laughs> he knows Darryl Porter Jr. He's like, I know where he's going. Man, he moved, I know where he's going. Appreciate you, Mark, man. Mark and his bug. Mark, like, listen, man, I know him. He wears a size 12 shoe. He like to play Fortnite only on Sundays. He got a half-brother, Marvin Jones Jr. Uh, his girlfriend's name is Satrice. <laughs> Mark probably is just, just spilling all the beans. He's an upgrade. We'll start. Um, so you say he's an upgrade. We'll start on the other side, Stevenson. Yeah, y'all like him like that? Mark Prado made what? Ten, ten different posts. <laughs> ten different posts. DJ, exactly, DJ. All, all of that you talking. <laughs> You want to know one thing, right? <laughs> Is he coming? Is uh, we 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 seem to believe that dog. We got a, we we got a real good chance of getting him. Um, like I told y'all, I talked to y'all about this stuff a while back. The transfer portal and the benefits of Miami and the transfer portal once again. Further recruiting grounds, right? South Florida, West Palm, all of Florida. You know what I'm saying? A lot of ballers. Transfer portal wide open. You don't have to sit out anymore. Miami will benefit from the kids going away. And some not cutting it or some just wanting to come home now. Now that Miami has created a situation where it seems like it's going to be a reputable place to go and, and spend money up to par with the rest of college football. I, I talked about this months ago. Right, months ago, months ago, we, we we touched on this that Miami will benefit from these situations. Months ago, months ago, man, just IOD, man, drop the IOD emojis, man. Just invest in us, dog. I mean, just invest in us, dog. Like, <laughs> like yeah, some of this stuff, man. I mean, we be some of this stuff would be spot on. Now we are gonna get some of it wrong. Uh, we'll get some of it wrong. But a lot of this stuff would be spot on. Months ago, we said that, well, Miami has another edge in the portal. When kids go off to these crazy cities, they don't want to come back home. They're going to want to come back home. First thought is to be come back home. I just came up here. This wasn't what I thought it was. Coach treat me like trash. Uh, your first thought is to go back home to mama. Guess what home is? Plantation. <laughs> Plantation. So Miami will be the recipient of a lot of kids this way. Um, uh, we spoke on this ad nauseum. I mean, we, we, we talk about this all the time. Miami will be the recipient of a lot of kids coming back home. Um, he's 5'11".
You say uh, Ardell, Ardell. You're talking about Adai. Adai was who recruited him to West Virginia. Adai recruited Marvin Jones Jr. to Georgia. Now he's Miami DB coach. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, we, yeah. We 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 believe that Marvin that um Daryl Porter Jr. will be inking with Miami soon. Um, that puts us at. So now we have a bunch of corner, bunch of young cornerbacks, right? We got some young dogs. We got some old dogs that have been there. Corey Couch. Um, they, they Ivy. Um, and now we add Daryl Porter. Listen, bro, uh, I know it's been a long time since my hurricane's been great, but it was competition. And it's weird. When we were winning, we didn't even look at it like that. We didn't look at it like, ooh, somebody got to sit down. Somebody got to sit on the bench. We didn't even think of it that way, though. We didn't even we didn't even look at look at it that way. Um, <laughs> okay, what you say? It ain't really hard to be an upgrade opposite. <laughs> man, y'all roll for that, man. Listen, man, y'all want to call in this morning? I got a little time. Y'all want to call in? Text me. 786-405-9499, same IOD squad number. Text me, 786-405-9499. Uh, we're going to get into some co-parenting stuff today, bro. Listen, it's the morning show. The morning show, we don't just talk about game football. I created the morning show so we can talk about a lot of different things, you know what I'm saying, uh, in the morning. Uh, game football all the time. We had a space last night, great space last night. Twitter, Twitter sound was going in and out which made it all bad. Um, but I, we had a good space last night. Talked about a lot of good things. It's Kamani McLean, a get T and Pokeway went at it. And because of the, how I had to create the space, we didn't record it. You know what I'm saying? Um, Twitter was tripping last night, bro. That's all I can say. Twitter was tripping last night. Tripping, tripping. Mm, I just saw my picture, man. I look a little dark on video, man, don't I? Yeah, dog, Twitter was tripping last night. So we're going to get into some co-parenting stuff, man, because I know there's a lot of dads out there go through it, man, and we don't have anybody to talk to about the crap because I went through it. Uh, and anytime I would say anything about it, all, every, all the dads stand up and be like, man, I went through the same thing. <laughs> I went through the same thing. So we're going to get into that in, in a little bit. But uh, but yeah, dog. Blades, I didn't even I didn't even say blades, huh? Blades. His rating for last year would have been rated second best cornerback from you. I mean, if he was on the team, so he can play. Yeah, Marvin, what's going on, Marvin? We got Marvin in here. Marvin, if y'all don't know, y'all new to this thing. It's Cam Kitchen's dad, Marvin Chapman. Um, I don't know why I say that just to say it. I don't know. I don't know what's the purpose of me saying that. I say it just to say it. I don't know why. Um, but yeah. If Blaze is help and plays good, I'm happy. I'm happy with um, with that. But we still use a nickelback. Porter has three years of eligibility left. Um, where Stevens and Blade will likely be last year. Yeah, I mean they stacking the cover, bro. I mean, bring them in, bring them in, bring them in. Um, bring them in. Shout out to everybody in the group. Me, that thing rolling. Um, I guess my condol my go my my condolences go out to Ukraine or whoever's involved with war. Uh, woke up to that. A lot of y'all woke up to that. It kind of started last night. Daryl, you know what's going on? <clears throat> yeah, that kind of started last night.
pretty ugly situation, man. Bunch of rich, powerful dudes using less dudes for their own personal business reasons because the ones fighting, you know, they're not, Russia's not fighting for freedom. I mean, they're not fighting for their life. Nobody's dying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they, they fight for their own political, financial reasons. And it's jacked up, dog. It is. It's jacked up. I can't lie. Jacked up. Jacked up. You say competition brings the best out of everybody. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I mean. So yeah. We're hearing a big chance Daryl Porter. A lot of reasons Daryl Porter Jr. will probably ink with the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, numerous reasons. Mark Pearl just came in here and gave us a few of them. A few of them we already know. We already knew. Uh, it's the reason why I put people on the thumbnail to come in here and talk about it with you guys. It's a reason for that. You on lunch, big dog? You got to go back to work. I've been trying to get y'all in an IOD investor die, man, so we can get, <laughs> so we can get, yeah, man, so we can get some out of time to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Where you at on lunch? Where you at? I've been trying to get y'all involved, man. Put a little to the side, jump in some crypto. Everything cheap now. The war got everything down. So let me see. Yeah, yeah, dog. Yeah. Ethereum 2400. Perfect time for you to jump on in. Perfect time. Yeah. It's coming down so you get coming down so you can pick it up. Perfect time for you to jump in. Y'all see me walking rocking the, the Mickey. Y'all see me rocking the Mickey Mouse. Crypto is on sale. And if you believe in it, you should be loading up. The weed plant. Yeah, I need to get with you. <laughs> the weed plant. What are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, if y'all know anybody about their business, man, 786 Tell them hit me up. Let me see if anybody's trying to get over here. And next week, Tuesday, the course starts. Next week, Tuesday, the course starts. Um, the course starts for the people that want to learn how to trade. They don't just get on and want to. Um, they actually want to learn how to trade. Put it that way. As an IOD squad, you can follow what we do. That don't necessarily mean you know how to read a chart. You know how to pick a stock. You can learn as you go. But um, we've got a course that starts Tuesday. Um, and it's live with me. Some of them are recorded classes that we recorded already. The first course is almost done. So we got another one that, that starts Tuesdays. I like to think 786 Hit us up. True Life, True Leaf. Crypto is on sale. Da, 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 true. If y'all in here, hit the like button for us, man, and hit subscribe. And make sure you hit that alert bell next to subscribe and turn on your alerts so you'll get a notification when we go live. What's today, Thursday? I don't even know, man. Thursday, Friday. 12-22. If you want to come on, if you want to call in, you got to send me a text, 786 i send you a link. And you can come on with just audio. You ain't got to show your first your face. Uh, we was talking about Daryl Porter Jr. And we're going to get into some co-parenting here shortly. Just talk about some stuff dads need to talk about, man. We men, we got to have these conversations. I remember when I was going through it, still going through it. I mean, halfway through it. If 
probably got two of my kids. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have anybody to talk to. Nobody wants to hear a man talks about co-parenting and things of that nature. Uh, yeah, like suck it. It's like suck it up. Try hard. You should try harder. You should work harder to be a parent. <laughs> That's what they say. You should try harder. Go fight. Find them. Type of stuff they tell dads. Uh, we tweeted out this morning, added another addition to the staff. Man, I staff on like an army on the sideline. An army, I say. Brought in director of football sports science, Eric Renegon, director of football sports science. Man, we hiring people in positions. We hiring people in positions we didn't even know exist for us, bro. Like, we were, we were literally playing football with one hand tied behind our back, dog. Literally. Literally. We literally was playing football with a hand tied behind our back. We done added all type, we done added all type of <laughs> food and the, the locker room. It says it's gonna be black and nice looking and uh The staff, they said about three times the staff. We were operating with a small outfit program. Yeah, and I think I think because we were able to recruit, we stayed afloat. They, they stayed afloat because they were able to recruit. Um And it worked for a while, and then they just started hiring anybody, first-time head coaches, and letting them do what they want to do. And, yeah, it kind of got out of hand. You know what I'm saying? But we, I, we realized that we were, we, were going to, we were going to war with one hand tied behind our back, dog. And that's why it wouldn't make sense when we would always be in dog fights with everybody in the ACC. But we have more talent than them. It would never, it would, it would never make sense. You know what I'm saying? That we would be in dog fights, but we have more talent than everybody in the coastal. We, we got to get into the many question again. I'm not getting beat up by teams like Georgia Tech. I know, dog. Like we will always look at the at the schedule before the game and be like, before the season and be like, I only see one loss. I only see error, error, error. I only see one loss. That's a pit. That's a win. North Carolina. That's a win. That's Virginia. That's a win. Oh, they lost their quarterback. That's a win. Only loss I see is Clemson. <laughs> How many losses we end up with? <laughs> How many losses we end up with? Because beginning to be before the season starts, all you see is one loss. Let me see. Y'all want to play the loss game? Let's play. The <laughs> Let's play the loss game. I only see one loss.
Oh, that's what we doing three hours ago. See, 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 you don't get this in Athens and Tuscaloosa. This ain't the type of stuff you get there. Money Mayweather, my buddy Jim. <laughs> with, 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 with old Mario three hours ago. Yeah, you don't get that there. Only in Miami, dog. Money Mayweather at that University of Miami gym. Ed Reed and Money Mayweather at the University of Miami gym. Champ is here. Shout out to you, Herb, man. Salute to you too, bro. <laughs> Floyd got a whole gym of himself. I know, right? He probably like, hey, man, let me run out to our gym. I want to come shoot some basketball today. What? <laughs> Let's see. What was Floyd doing today? I totally got sidetracked. We're going to play the one loss game. You ever seen me with in person? It was a little dude, man. You know, Mario asking for a speech. He probably here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you, I, don't, I don't know. Why would Floyd Mayweather be at the gym? You know what I'm saying? Like, he probably there for a reason. Maybe they asked him to come there to, to, to give a speech or talk to the kids or something. Yeah, I got kind of sidetracked. So this is what we was doing. We were looking for. We was going to play the lost game. Play the loss game. Let's see. How many losses y'all? How many losses y'all see? <laughs> How many losses? Is Charlie Strong really short? Charlie Strong not short, man. I think he got some long arms. How many losses y'all see? They say he 5'10". How many losses y'all see? <laughs> we do this every year, though. We got Boston College. It'll be 2 0 right here. One, two. Texas AM. Mm. And Middle to see at home. So it should be 3 and 1, right? Then we get into the ones that always get that always get us. 
North Carolina, Virginia Tech. Duke, Virginia, Florida State. <laughs> Everybody see one loss. Sure, you see one loss, dog. <laughs> Every year we see one loss, dog. Every year. Every year we see one loss. Now, I honestly think we're going to be able to. I think, I think things are changing. I know things are changing, and we're going to be able to. We're going to be able to 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 do that soon. Yeah, we had that picture of him at the podium up the other day. That's not Boston College. That's Bethune Cookman. I said two. <laughs> I said two and no. I know that's Bethune. Mm -hmm. Yes, we all know that's Bethune. So one I see one loss. Somebody said they see three or four losses. It's always three or four losses. We could never really see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we never get to really see it. Like, like we don't see it before the season starts, and then they end up four or five losses. You got old Clemson, huh? At Clemson? Why? Why? Why Clemson? Why Clemson never come here? Didn't we play at Clemson last time? How does this? How does this work? Why Clemson don't come here? They came here that one time long ago when they thrashed us. Big dogs. They he don't see no losses. Listen, man, we definitely under some new command. Another new command. Um, definitely under new command. Make sure y'all hit the like button for me and hit subscribe and hit the alert bell. Uh, let's get these likes up, though. Um, let me see how many we got. Let's get these likes up. Oh, yeah, man. Y'all hit the like button for us. Good Lord, it's free. Only a hater will hit the like button right now. Or hit subscribe. The subscription button is free, too. Only a hater would subscribe, though. Only a hater. There we go. Get them like buttons up. Hit the like button for me, man. It's free. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the alert bell. Only a hater be sitting there like, man, I don't hit and subscribe on the street. I don't think. He don't talk about canes all the time. I like, I like Rico. They talk about real football. They talk about the offensive line. They talk about <laughs> only a hater wouldn't hit like or subscribe or alert right now. All right, we at 30. Only a hater, dog. Only a hater. It's free. It's free. Now, there's other things around here you pay for membership, ILD squad, courses. That's just me wanting to see you do do better, man. Do something different. Learn something different. I know what it did for me, you know what I'm saying, in my thought process. I just try to give it to y'all. You feel me? 32 likes. That's what's up. 33, we getting going. Hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. Um, it's free. The members in the group me get all type of. early information and they get pictures and, and things and whereabouts like when we were places and nobody really knew where we at because we probably got no business being there um but that's people who's in the group me they're part of the ild squad if you're in the ild squad you also got access to the group me also um 
37. All right, we go, yeah, okay, okay, okay. We can at least we can at least get the 50 likes, dog. We can at least get the 50 likes. Uh 50 subscriptions. You know what I'm saying? I'm surprised so many people watch that don't subscribe. I know sometimes y'all just forget. Just like y'all forget the shirts and stuff are down there because nobody ever looks down there. But yeah, man, hit the subscribe, hit the alert bell so you'll know when we go live. I appreciate y'all listening to me, bro. Appreciate y'all. Uh, we're gonna get into this co-parenting thing, man. We're gonna let you lock like, beautiful love Dorsey. I think she's beautiful. Give scenarios on when is it when is it okay to take a parent away, a kid away from a parent? Like, uh, uh-uh, you can't go over your mama's house no more because X. Other than abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, not eating, other than we're not talking nothing, nothing crazy. Like, when, get to, when is it okay to take a parent from another kid? A, a kid from a parent. Other than I'm talking about nothing crazy, the, the stuff that everybody agree on. Um, and she's finna she's finna talk about that and break that down. Um, and then we're gonna get into that and talk about that a little bit, man. Just for the men. I know a lot of men go through these things. Some dudes call me talking about IOD, and we start talking about their crazy baby mama. It happens all the time, though. All the time. All the time it happens. Now, uh, what she's talking about is she's talking about when is it okay for a parent to take a child away? I think she's going to bring a girl on here. The girl going to give what she thinks, and then she's going to give her assessment of it. Thank you, shopping. This is what's so, you know. So, long story short, I did not make her dinner. So after the dinner, you know, I'm the lit aunt. She come back to my house. I'm laying in the bed. She come in the room. She like, auntie, um, you know, our dinner over with. She be showing me her dress. Let me pause her right quick. Damn. I ain't realize I ain't want rocking no headphones, dog. That's love, Dorsey. I let you. I don't know, man. She's like a hood psychiatrist. I don't know where she got her knowledge from, but she, she very... I, I don't, I, I, I don't Tell know. Tell me how it went. And so then I, I said to her, you know, I'm going to, because I still didn't get her gifts, right? So I was like, I'm going to go tomorrow and I'll call you. She's telling the story of, hey, listen, uh, one mom was saying, hey, it happened to me. Um, dad being inconsistent, he be hurting his kids' feelings. Uh-uh, my child ain't going over there because he up and down. He be hurting their feelings. He inconsistent. He don't show up. So she's, she's giving a scenario to where her dealing with her, her niece would take you shopping this is what i first told her i'm gonna take her shopping for the stuff that she wants she wants some designer she told me the stuff good i'll take you shopping so she paused and looked at me because she knows i'm inconsistent she was like now auntie this is how she's looking at me now her voice changed tone because she already know bitch you're probably lying so she like auntie now i'm gonna call you auntie i ain't gonna wait for you to call me so i was like no i'm gonna call you i'm still gonna call you like she battling with me at this point because she know I'm inconsistent, bitch. Like, I don't always come through when I say I do. I don't mean no harm, but, bitch, sometimes I don't pull up when I say I'm going to pull up, right? So, the next day came, and I didn't call her. I did not call and take her shopping like I said I was. I lied, right? What I did do is I got up, put my clothes on, went over to International Mall, and she told me she wanted some coach and all of this. So, I went and I got the things myself that she said she wanted. I bought her some coach shoes, this cute little coach purse. is one of their newest bags that came out. You know, I made the shit lit for her. So, I called her on my way back, and I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm on my way home. Or no, I said, I got your birthday gifts. You can come pick them up whenever you're ready. Her dad at this point is out of town, so now she got to get her grandma to come get her gifts. You know, this is the inconvenience I created, right? So she's like, okay, auntie, so the stuff going to be at the house? And I said, yeah, but I was lying because I'm literally on the bridge with the stuff in my car. And I lied and told her, like, the stuff is at my house, right? Still lying. Just a day later, I'm still lying. So she pull up to my house with her, her, her grandma, bring her to my house, and I ain't up with the stuff. So they just stay. Like, she like, I guess she like, fuck this. I'm going to get my stuff for auntie today. She gets dropped off. So the grandma leave and leave her and her brothers at my house. So now they're at my house with my kids. You know, my fiance there. You say you know, she hood, but boy, she, like, she, you know, she, 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 I know boy, what she wants. You know what she's talking I'm about, boy. Like she three get... times at this point, right? So I finally get that. I give her the stuff. I go in the room. She open up her stuff. Now, 
my fiance pops he in the kitchen with her when she opened up her stuff. So he come in the room and he tell me he like, damn, she happy about that shit. She was like, she didn't know you was going to go all lot about that or whatever. You know, I came through. But this was after like three, four lies and shit. Still lying. I want to know from y'all so I don't get to see my niece no more because I'm going to I do this often now. I'm keeping it G with y'all. Like these niggas, I often don't pull up. There are times I told them I was going to buy stuff and I didn't. There are times I would told them I was going to take them places and I mismanaged. I do this often and my niece knows this about me. That's why when I was like, I'm going to take you shopping tomorrow, she was like, now, auntie, because she know, bitch, auntie be lying, right? So according to y'all females and like the post that I read, because it didn't just say daddies, it said family members too. Y'all finna keep my niece from me? Like I can't see my niece no more? Because I do be lying and I am inconsistent. So because of that, like I don't get to see my niece no more. Because I'm, I'm a good person. Like, I'm a great resource for a child to have. I might let them down often during their adolescent years. But, bitch, like, I'm somebody to know. Like, I'm going to be lit for my niece. When she get older and she going through stuff with these little boys and, you know, she need to read. Still lying and all. <laughs> great resource. Listen, man. People miss me. She talks in the language that a lot of people understand. Y'all, as women, come off where y'all... Very, very I'm brilliant young lady. Comments. Very, very, oh, very intelligent so young lady. Many Emotionally like, yep, brilliant. Yep, and I, people telling me I'm crazy for not letting them see the kids because just all this shit. And in my mind, I ain't even trying to side with the niggas. I'm reading the shit and I'm thinking, like, I am inconsistent. Like, I often don't come up with, right, you know, right. financial <laughs> right. support sometimes. Like, and even with my own kids, like, I be inconsistent. Like, if I let them on your dad tell y'all, like she be saying she finna cook some and then get home and change her mind and don't cook it. Like, hell, sometimes they be in the kitchen like, what we gonna eat? I don't know. Figure it out. Like, it's Uber Eats, you know, Grandma Eats. She yeah, paid, too. Don't leave that out. She tonight. paid. She give advice food. to you people. Know, I told y'all this morning I was gonna make the lasagna or what I lied. Lied. And I be lying often based on mismanagement of time and shit like that. Like, it, it, Travis, it don't be like I ain't lying trying to like hurt nobody. I be, I got a lot going on. And then some days, it be a mental health day. My kids know, I tell them, listen, I ain't right right now. I was aggravated with work. Like, just figure it out. Figure it out. So I, I'm trying to figure out from y'all finna come take my kids. Because I be lying. They know I, I lie. Like, it don't be, you know, nothing too crazy. But I get a little razzle-dazzle with, you know, saying I'm going to do some shit or take them somewhere. And we don't go. Or I don't do it, or you know what I mean? Like y'all well, a lot of people in the comments saying those like, your I, nieces. I, I get to lose that ain't your kids. kids it's different. Kids. Those ain't your kids. But watch what you finna say. I done told them I pay for stuff and didn't pay for I it. think I think she honestly yeah, set them up in the comments to say that. Those ain't your kids. Then she gonna tell a story about her but kids. Y'all finna take my kids. No, sometimes it listen. So I'm going to get even deeper. Sometimes they cry because of my inconsistencies. Y'all going to take my kids because I see some of y'all women. You, My kids ain't finna be crying. He ain't finna be messing with them emotions. I, I be fucking with my kids' emotions with my behavior sometimes. Y'all finna take my kids. Nah, Tim, Tim, you just getting in here, Tim. You don't understand. She's making a point, y'all. Y'all finna come. Like I don't get to be a mama no more. Y'all finna come gather up all of my children because of my inconsistencies and lying about certain shit I'm going to pull up and do and because I make them cry sometimes. Like, with saying I'm going to do stuff and take them somewhere. So so the people that are just getting in here, what she's saying is, is a lot of times mama say, oh, I ain't let my child go over there because he too inconsistent. He let them down. So she's giving instances as a mom where she's inconsistent. She deserves to have her kids take. That's what she's saying. She's making a point. Just hear it out. It only a little bit low. Well, then I don't take y'all finna take my kids away from me. Like I'm not a good parent because y'all, according to y'all on this post, y'all take them from y'all baby daddy for the same stuff. Take them. Can't see them. Nope. Can't come around. You bringing around that other girl, your girlfriend, and you doing this, and you didn't buy John John no shoes, but you bought that girl son for Valentine's Day. Never to see him again. It's over with. Somebody said, why are you comparing yourself to men that know they literally spill lies every day just so they can stay around a baby? I can't speak for every individual situation, but 
a lot of the reasons that I'm hearing women, this is why I'm adding women to my live on Instagram, saying that they're eliminating access is some of the same shit that as a mom, I do. I am inconsistent, like often with shit when it comes to just managing time and doing shit in life. There have been times like, my, I, I'll, I'll even take it even further. My youngest daughter, one time, She, she's making a point of which, which for people who came in late. Basically, she read a post of a, a woman saying, he inconsistent, he let my kids down, my kids ain't going over there no more. I'm here to protect my kids. You know what I'm saying? And she like, well, I'm thinking about this shit. I'm like, I'm inconsistent. My child ate a, because she gonna get into the story where her child, her own child ate a, a tie pause. <laughs> she said, y'all coming to take my kids? She basically just making them understand how stupid those statements sound. When did you become God? That same man that you laid down with, that you had a baby with, was consistent enough for you, all of a sudden not consistent enough for a child that ain't gonna do nothing but worship him because that's her dad. I don't understand. Listen, I got a simple rule. If we was in the house together and you wouldn't make that decision, don't make a decision different because we're not in the house together. Cal say, until kids say they don't want to have a relationship there, you let them kids do them. Cal, even if the kids say, I don't want to go to daddy house. Because if the kid was in your house, if you and your wife was in the house and a child was in there and your child woke up one morning and said, Daddy, I don't want to be with y'all no more. What would you say? <laughs> what would you say? Okay, go live with Auntie Scott. <laughs> what would you say? So, Cal, I don't even agree with that. What would you say? Oh, the child woke up one morning was like, Mama, I don't really want to fuck with you no more. I'm just going to mess with Daddy. So you stay in the room or I ain't coming to no side of the house no more. I'm just going, what would you say? I thought because, because, man, listen, man. My baby mamas would have had to be crackheads or homeless, you know what I'm saying, for me to deprive them kids and not have any, having a mom. Everything else is just emotional. You're not protecting them from nothing. The same people be telling me they protected them from something. Crazy shit be going on in their own house. They don't be protecting them from that. Same person said, I'm protecting my kids from something. Be the same mother who ain't even home half the time. That's the point she was trying to make. She trying to make the point of, so you become God in the jury for your child not to have a dad because he doesn't send money when you want him to? Or he, he said he was going to show up and something happened, he didn't show up and your child got mad and started crying? You make your child cry. <laughs> you make your child cry all the time. The point, she, the point she was trying to make is, and then she just went on and on and started talking about, well, let's take my own kids. I piss my own kids off all the time. And we all know she's telling the truth. But the, the way the mind work is, is sometimes we just side with whatever side, with whatever we want to side. We, we side with the things that we want to agree with. And we just side with it. We don't really think, think things through. Uh, Mijia said, as the parent, job to protect their child. I leave it up to them. I agree with your point about being in the same house. Yeah, me, JR, I mean, 
it's a parent for it's a it's, it's a parent's job to protect their child. Uh, if it's real protection, bro. Period. If you're really protecting them from something, I made this shirt that said, uh, "I do anything for my kids except let them see their daddy." Y'all seen me wear it before because that's what a lot of parents say. I do anything for my kids. I do anything for my kids. Then break up with dad, and then ah, uh -uh, he can't go over there. They be treating her wrong. What? <laughs> so I do anything for my kids except let them see their daddy. It's a shirt I made. <laughs> Emotional trauma is real, but like I said, the debate needs nuances on surface level, yeah, but it's not simple one way or the other. It is simple, me, JR. Emotional trauma is real. You show me a house that doesn't have some emotional trauma in it. Show me a situation in life that doesn't have some emotional letdown in it, inconsistencies in it. Show me. Show me. The same person saying that he's emotionally abusing my kid because he's letting them down is the same person who's not a perfect parent at home that lets their kid down. Show me. I, it, 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 those reasons, somebody should not have, you know what I'm saying, should not, you know, you shouldn't take a kid away from a parent for those, those, those reasons. I mean, that, but that's the point she was trying to make. Y'all should check her out, man. She talks hard. But she awesome, dog. She awesome. She 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 goes in. Emotional abuse can be very harmful to children who cannot process why a parent is not there at the time. Remember the Fresh Prince episode with Will's father? Mm-hmm. So so to combat the emotional abuse <laughs> that dad being inconsistent, you're gonna take him away from dad. Or you're gonna take him away from mom. To combat the emotional boost not happening. <laughs> what? Come on. Bro, listen. Either way, it doesn't make sense. The person that's saying he's emotionally abusing my child because he's not showing up is not a psychiatrist. They're not. They're not psychiatrists at all. So they're not, they're not even trained to, 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 to see emotional abuse. Of course, if a if a if a parent say I'm coming and don't show up, a kid's gonna cry. That's emotional abuse. So the kid don't cry at your house. So when y'all home, it's fucking roses every day. The kid not crying. The kid not cry. The kid gets his way every day. No, everybody's happy every day. Don't you dare come make my child cry. Cal, y'all remember, Cal remember the whole thing. Will was happy to see his father. Will. <laughs> yes, man. Yes. Me, JR, it is that simple. It, it is that simple. It, it is that simple. It, it, it is that simple. Unless, unless the child is being physically abused, emotionally told, just treated like a dog. You know what I'm saying? Yes, the, both parents have a right to make mistakes with that child. How can one parent have a right to make mistakes and not the other one? It is very simple, Mijel, very simple. You can't say, listen, man, you be perfect. I dare you not show up. I dare you make mistakes. I dare you. You be perfect. No, you let that child go with their dad and let their dad give them what they have. You let that child go with their mom, let their mom give them what they have. Now, when the mom starts failing, you're there to pick them up. But just because you keep a child away from their other parent don't mean that the child is getting this A1, this A1 raising in your house. No, it's not. We know it's not. Nobody, nobody's fucking completely figured parenting out. So who, who makes you the God to say, say yeah. Can't go over there no more. If it was simple, we wouldn't be here. It took me oh, 13, 14, and 15 to see my mom had a legit reason to be cussing my dad out. I became a track star in Jamaica. He wanted to call me every day. Mm. 
It took me to be 13, 14, 15 to see my mom had a legit reason to be cussing my dad out. I became a track star in Jamaica. He wanted to call me every day. So because you're good at track, your dad doesn't have a have a get a chance to reconcile something that was probably messed up as a kid. Because you're good at track. <laughs> because, because you're good at track. You know what I'm saying? Your dad, they'll get a chance to reconcile and come back and say, hey, man, I messed up. Or, hey, man, your mom was an asshole. Because you're fast at running. Channing Crowder talked about the same thing. You know, he talked about, and he said it was his fault. Like, he, had, he felt he had to pick a side, and he sided with mom. Um, <clears throat> me, Jay, I have not seen both situations. I have not seen, I have not seen a situation where it was like, all I'm saying is this, if my kids have a mom and the mom has a house or, or stay somewhere, the kids need to be with their mom. Period. I don't care if she's not perfect. You ain't perfect. I ain't perfect. They need to be with their mom because they need to have a relationship with their mom. I, I don't I don't know what she could possibly be doing to make me say, uh, oh, y'all can't go over there no more. They fuss too much. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Right, that boy. I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, that boy, because you're fast at football. You're fast at track. Your dad can't reconcile something that's bigger than sports, which is your relationship, because you think he's there because, oh, you happen to be fast. Think about what I'm saying, huh? Think about what I'm saying. You, should he have should he have wait till you were no longer fast or, or, or didn't make it to the Olympics, then come back and say, all right, listen, man, let's talk. You ain't doing shit no more. You just working. <laughs> now we can talk. I think, man, I think, I think, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, nobody said all moms are not good. What the hell you in here talking about, man? <laughs> nobody said all moms are not good. Any mom that's saying that dumb shit is a clown. That's what I'm saying. Can't go over there. He let my child down. You let your child down all the time. Nobody's taking your kids. She just explained how she's jacked up as a parent. Nobody come and take her kids. No, any parent saying, any parent, mom or dad, saying something goofy like that, nah, man, they just can't go over there no more. They be over there tripping. But he, but he wasn't there earlier. For whatever what reason. We don't know why he wasn't there earlier. You say he should have been there earlier. We don't know why. Why wasn't he there earlier? Mama could have been an a-hole. Um, he could have, he, hey, he could have been dealing drugs and had to run for his life. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? We don't know, but I know this. It's never too late. And you being fast at track ain't going to be a reason why I stop trying to, you know what I'm saying? I, when the time come, I come to be a part of your life. That boy said, my mom never stopped me from seeing my dad. He, um, he on his own was two years without seeing me once. When I get a teenager, I ain't really had nothing to say. I was numb to that. <sighs> All I can say to that is this. Um, if, he, if, if you look him in his eye, he say, hey, man, I went two years without seeing you because I just didn't feel like coming over that end. Then now you got a point. But if it's your mom saying, I don't stop your daddy from seeing you, and he ain't been around for two years, and then he tried to come around. Now you mad. You ain't talk to him. You ain't talk to him. Why you mad? So obviously, whatever you got came from your mom, like whoever was staying with. And I don't know your situation, but what I'm saying is, is that 
Listen, bro, I had baby moms that would say straight up, my kids need to be with their dad. Tell their parents, tell their cousins that, tell their brothers that, tell me that. I know these kids need to be with their dad. And I still had to fight in court to get custody of them. Now, make that make sense. That, and that's sometimes the type of we're dealing with, you know what I'm saying? Like, make it make sense. Me, JR, I'm simply saying this. It ain't about me. This is what I'm saying. Simply. A parent being inconsistent, a, 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 all that stuff she said is not a reason for a child not to have a relationship with their parents. Period. Period. You don't play God and take a child's dad or take a child's mom away because you feel, oh, he ain't showing up. He hurting her feelings. Oh, no, bro, that's part of parenting. You hurt the child's feelings all the time. You tell them all the time hurt their feelings. Ain't no nuances. If they're saying that, then it's trash. There's no reason for a child not to go to another parent house. Not even if you're not giving no money. Like, what, what does that got to do with a child having a dad? What's that have to do with it? <laughs> that child needs their father. That child needs their mother. Everything else is another parent just, just doing some dumb that a parent would do, that an adult would do. I try to think and put myself in the shoes and say, what reason would I not send my kids with their, with their mom? What reasons wouldn't I send my kids with their mom? And there's, there's no reason I wouldn't send them unless she was on drugs, homeless, incapable of taking care of them. Other than that, everything else is just being human. Period. Everything else is just being human. You can't tell somebody to be a perfect parent and you're not a perfect parent. Yeah, we need to watch the video again. She just made a perfect example, dog. Perfect example she just made. She's inconsistent. You gonna come take the kids? <laughs> then I'll take the kids. Now, if Packy was in the house trying to teach the kids how to play linebacker, fuck yeah, you take the kids. That's worse than abuse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you take the kids. Then you take the kids. Dad or mom is not a plus. Sometimes it's a, ne or a negative. I mean, I think that's a lie. <laughs> I think that's a lie. Show me, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's the things that I name, I think it's a lie. I, I think it's a lie. Unless it's the things that I name. Abuse, like, like real abuse, like physical abuse. Verbal abuse, you cussing the kid out, saying you ain't shit. If it ain't none of that, then that child need to know who their father is. That child need to know who their mother is. That child, need, that child need to know who their mother is. MJ, I think you just like to argue sometimes. <laughs> Drugs, abuse, you might be the hell of stuff. Physical abuse, verbal abuse, I'm going to say it again. Drugs, physical abuse, verbal abuse, the obvious stuff. The obvious stuff that we know, listen, bro. Other than that, I don't, I don't see. I, I don't see. No, you, you can't take a kid. Who are you, God? You name God. You can't take a kid from their parent. Oh no, he let her down. He being inconsistent. <laughs> what? What? He he being he being inconsistent. He say he gonna do something, don't never do it. He be making my child mad. You make your child mad. You don't. Who, who child is always happy? Raise your hand if your child is always happy and you do everything your child say and you get it all right. Show a show of hands. Who house is perfect and their child is always happy and they get? <laughs> it's not gonna happen. 
Gremlin just hired Art Browse. It's not going to happen. What if the parent is a drug dealer? You okay with sending your kids to the other parent's house? The same drug dealer that you was in a relationship with and had a baby with? You felt danger? You was in danger when you was over there with your drug dealer girlfriend? Huh? With your drug dealer wife? Was you? Did you feel in danger over there? <laughs> All I'm saying is this. At some point in time, you were there. At some point in time, <laughs> you were there. And you felt, dang, did you feel in danger? Huh? If the child, if, if the child, if, if, if the child can be in harm's way, I think drug, I think selling drugs, um, I guess it's different type of drug dealers. You know what I'm saying? If drugs are coming through the house and, and things happen at the house, then no, I wouldn't want my child to be over there. No, sir. You want to add that to the list? Add it to the list. Those things that we've all heard people say, nah, they inconsistent. They can't. Even, they don't even send money. I had I had a coworker tell me one time he don't pay he don't pay no child support. He can't see his kids. I say what? <laughs> like what? He got to pay to be a daddy. <laughs> it must be so edible for the kids to say though. You said they about to bust Dion head. Why? What Dion not did? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by you wanting something different for your child is okay. Um, you wanting something different for your child is okay. You being in danger is not the same as a as a child. Bro, listen, if y'all want to add drugs coming through the house on the list, I'm happy. Add it to the list. It's probably a couple other scenarios we can come up with. But those ones that I say that we hear all the time are trash. That's what I'm saying. It's simple. It's trash. It's trash. But at some point in time, you were at the house. You felt like having a uh, like you felt like having a baby with this drug with the drug dealer. Now you smart. <laughs> now all of a sudden you got wisdom. You smart. You want you want to be safe. This, we, we know this happens all the time, bro. I mean, this happens all the time. Some parents use kids as pawns when they can't get their way. Been down that road before. I mean, a lot of us has been down that road before. I mean, that's why every now and then I talk about these things. Or every now I talk about them, there's a lot of dads that been through it. And unless you catch it on camera, it's like nobody don't want to hear it because it's suck it up, be strong. You know what I'm saying? You say you were a Marine. Would you want your baby in the Marines as a baby? What do you mean? The, the whole family be on the Marine base. What? The Marines pay for the family to be there. They have a house on the base. It's good living. What you mean? What you saying? I don't understand what you're saying. The Marines bring the whole family up. The whole family be on the base. When you go out and deploy, your family stay in the house on the base or, or stay out in town on the base. The Marines pay you to live. Uh, I'm not sure what that question is. That's all I'm saying. I let y'all watch the video. She was she was making the point to the other women that hey, this sounds silly. You know what I'm saying? Y'all saying because somebody's inconsistent, somebody let the kid down in your eyes that they don't deserve to be a parent. And she explained why it sounds silly. You know what I'm saying? Because hey, listen, I can be inconsistent. I can be these things. You telling me you finna come get my kids? 
No, a lot of times in those situations, we know what it is. Um, so listen, man, we started this thing off with talking about <clears throat> Daryl Porter Jr., big chance he signs with the University of Miami. All signs are pointing that he may be headed here for a lot of numerous different reasons. Uh, a lot of y'all saying he'll be the, the second cornerback on the team instantly if he lands here. Um, that's what's up, at least on paper, you know what I'm saying? Then they have to fight for it. Um, I was told last year that DJ Ivy was gonna have a good season, and that didn't pan out. Um, some people don't like the truth. <laughs> Two lies say my dad was a contractor and, and, and saved. My mom would keep me away from him. Then once I became 14, she realized I needed him more than her. His personal grudge is more than anything. Yeah, I mean, most of the time we know what it is, bro. Like if if you if you wouldn't do it, if y'all was in the same house together, right? And you wouldn't make a decision to do it if y'all was in the same house together, you don't do it when y'all not in the same house together. Think about this. Little kids explore and do little weird little things. Little kids, little brothers and sisters and cousins, they do little weird little things. The only time you hear of, of siblings touching each other is when both when the parents aren't together. <laughs> You've never heard a parent come to work and be like, man, me and my husband was home last night, man. We walked in the room, man. The four-year-old was fingering the three-year-old. And we called the police. You only hear things like that when the parents aren't together. There are certain things that only happens when parents aren't together. So what I'm saying is, if you wouldn't handle it like that if y'all was in the house, don't handle it like that because y'all not together, because then that's when it's bullshit. That's when, it, that's when it's BS. So listen, um, 7864-59499, if y'all trying to figure out what to do during this war <laughs> with your crypto, because it's all going to be down. You know what I'm saying? Um, the stuff we talk about on the IOD squad, hit us up, 7864-59499. Um, yeah, some people don't like the truth. Uh, I've been on here 118. An hour 30, that's like wholesome holiday time. Y'all know I don't stay in here that long. We should we might be hearing some good news today, man, here soon. Uh we talked to Bane. We sat out with Bane yesterday and we shot what's the name? Um we about to announce the NIL deal with Chase and Power by Footballville. That's gonna be big, big thing, man. We got a video and everything about the drop. Uh that's gonna be big. Um and we're gonna need y'all support on that. Um, what else? Bang, say the nightmare over. Tauber Bang, big bang. Say the nightmare's over. Uh <laughs> you feel me? Uh and, and it and it feels like it is. So, like I've been saying, we got some things coming up in 2022, dog. Well, uh, we about to get this thing popping. How do I how you feel, Street, about war? You was in the military. Shit, we didn't, I didn't feel good about it then. Uh, I went to the military because I had to get away from home. Um, I needed a restart, you know what I'm saying? I realized I, I didn't really plan. I didn't really know where I was going. I didn't know I was what I wanted to do at 18. So I just got away from my friends so I can go find myself. Um, that's a that's a rich power man's game, man. And, and they use the, the peasants, the people, to fight their wars. Uh, we all saw it with Afghan and all of that stuff. They use it to fight their wars for their own reasons, and a lot of the reasons is not something that's going to benefit you or me. Um, I don't like it one bit. But it's about power. It's about, yeah, it's about money. It's about power. Listen, it's not a lot of patriotism in the military like y'all think it is. 
One of the funniest things, one of the funniest things, I remember when Colin Kaepernick was taking a knee was about the flag and him disrespecting the flag, right? When we were in the military, right? When colors were sounded like 6 p.m., 4 p.m., something like that, and you would have to stop and salute the flag as colors sound throughout the base. We would run and hide. We did not want to get caught with colors. We were United States Marines, bro. That's why when I was, that's why when everybody say, hey man, they disrespecting the military, I, I say to myself, ask somebody in the military. It's a trash argument, dog. We did not want to stand and salute the flag, not because we had anything against the flag. It just was like we didn't want to get stuck there. You know what I'm saying? And now, Colin Kaepernick takes a knee for a cause, and oh my God, he disrespected the flag. Yes, man. That was that was the weird part of me. Somebody brought that to my attention. Yep, run. <laughs> Somebody brought that to my attention, dog. That I remember we used to run from colors like we didn't want to get caught. Like it wasn't like oh, colors are sounding around the country. No, it was not that. Colin Kaepernick takes a knee. We all patriots now, now, because when the start, because when they play the national anthem at the games, I always will. I oh, I never stop moving. I would always walk around, get the kids with their hands on their chest. That's the only way you can get those shots on the camera is if you're moving and they got their hand on their chest. I may take my hat off or something. I was a marine. I served my country. Now, when I keep moving, you know what I'm saying? Is now when I keep moving, which is something I always did. You get these looks like, look at him. He, he doesn't respect the country. <laughs> but it was something that I always did. It was something that I always did. You know what I'm saying? It was it was something I always did. Now now they now now they look at it like, and you see some people rush to stand up at the games now. Like I, I'm, it's almost like take a side like. This is my side. I got pride in the day. The same person that'll be buying beer with a national anthem playing next week. Bro, don't let these, don't, don't let these arguments, these television arguments, these entertainment arguments um confuse you or get you on focus and and, and, and and off track of what the prize is. All right. NFT dropping March 18, big dog. IOD squad to get them first, members will get them second, and then we'll release them to the public. Uh, it was an NFT drop yesterday, Invisible Men. One, it was one of the biggest ones that that, that was anticipated. They say so, some of them sold for six hundred dollars and was instantly reselling for twenty thousand. Invisible Men in the Metaverse. So we have our project dropping, man. Um, it's up to y'all if y'all want to invest. Nobody's forcing you to. Uh, March 18th, we're going to get that going. See y'all in the group, me man. I'm D, and I'm out of here.